2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, we read, It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether other body I do not know, God knows, such a one was cut up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, how he was cut up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Brethren, in this passage, the Apostle Paul speaks about the third heaven. And by this declaration, we understand that there are three heavens. If someone tells me that he lives on the third floor of a building, that will tell me that there is a first and second floor, and that if I want to get to the third floor, I must go through the first and the second floors. So there is no doubt that there are three heavens. And at this time, I would like to speak to you about these three heavens, and especially of the third heaven. The first heaven has been called the atmospheric sky, where the clouds are. It is the atmosphere above us where the birds and planes fly. Scientists tell us that the atmosphere is 60 kilometers high. It is where it is here in this atmosphere, this sky, this heaven, if you please, that the Columbia astronauts uh, had their accident on February 1st, 2003, as they were came in, coming back from outer space. The shuttle space uh, was completely destroyed. This first heaven was created by God on the second day. Genesis 1, 6 through 8, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water, and let it divide the waters from the waters, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which are where, where under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. In verse 20, it, it is called the open firmament of heaven, referring to the atmosphere. Jesus referred to this heaven when he says in Matthew 8, 20, foxes have dens and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, the second heaven, it is called also the sidereal sky or heaven, which is where the stars, the sun, the moon, and the planets are. This heaven is where the astronauts have gone to do their experiments outside the atmosphere. David said, speaking about this heaven, in Psalms 19 and verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed his handiwork. The prophet Isaiah declares these words in chapter 40 and verse 22, it is that that seated upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretched out the heavens as a curtain, and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. To prove that this heaven is where the stars are, listen to what Christ says about this uh, heaven. Immediately, in Matthew 24 and 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So, we have talked already about the first heaven and the second heaven. But now, let us talk about the third heaven. And it is in this heaven where uh, the Godhead or deity dwells. There is where our heavenly Father is. In First King chapter 8 and verse 30, speaking Solomon, in the dedication of the temple, he prays to God this way, And hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, 
when they shall pray toward this place, speaking about the temple, and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and when thou hearest, forgive. Also, this is where our Lord Jesus Christ dwells. Hebrews 4 and 14 says, See and then that we have a high, great high priest that is, that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. When the Lord ascended to heaven, he passed through the heavens to get to the third heaven. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. It is to this third heaven that Christ ascended after his resurrection. It is this place that Stephen saw and saw Luke and saw the Lord Jesus Christ before he died. In Acts 7 and 56, it says, And behold, I saw the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. This place is called the heavens of heavens. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 14. Behold, the heaven of the heavens of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that there is. And the Apostle John had the privilege to saw in a vision the heavens where God dwells. And we can read about that in Revelations 21, 10 through 27. So, let's talk about some of the conditions that will exist in the third heaven. There will be eternal life, eternal. John 5, 28 and 29 says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which the all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And that means eternal life. And those that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And that also means eternal damnation. The inhabitants of this place are going to be conscious, living eternally. Death will no longer exist since it was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 and 14 says, And dead in hell were cast into the lake of fire. So it's going to be life eternal. Secondly, there will be joy and gladness. Matthew 25, verses 20 and 21 says, And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make the ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. David, being a prophet of God, spoke thus of this place in the presence of God at the right, at the, at the right. It says in Psalms 16 and 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In, the, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Also, brethren, there will be, is going to be rest. Yes, Revelation 14 and 13 says, And I hear a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their words do follow them. Yes, in this sinful world, we are weary and overwhelmed with so many things that weigh us down. But in that wonderful place, it will be rest from our neighbor, from our labors. And sometimes from our neighbors too. Depends on the neighbors that we may have. But there's going to be rest for us. Now, what are we going to enjoy in the third heaven? We're going to enjoy of a reward. 
a recompense of an inheritance. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 4 it says, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. So we're going to have that reward. We also are going to have a citizenship. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, it says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people in our day fight to death for being citizens of this great country, of any other major country. But just imagine being citizens of heaven here on this earth. We are only pilgrims. We are only strangers and pilgrims. Hebrews 11 and 13 speaks about this. And also 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11 says, Dearly beloved, I visit you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. The permanent and eternal home for the Christians is not this world but it is heaven. Also, brethren, we're going to enjoy from a treasure. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon air, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rot, rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And to the rich young ruler, the Lord said in Matthew 19 and verse 21, If you want to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. That is why the Lord tells us to strive for that treasure in heaven. Brethren, heaven is not just an imagination. Heaven is real. There is no other truth so well established in the Bible as the truth that it is heaven and in, in that heaven is the eternal dwelling place of the faithful, the righteous, the children of God. The word heaven appears more than 500 times in the Bible. God's word guarantees a life of happiness full of blessings for the saved after this earthly life is gone. And he promised us blessings in that heavenly mansions. The Bible speaks about this place in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Also in John 14, 1 to 3 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. There, are, there is a religious group, the Jehovah Witnesses, who deny that the saved will go to heaven. And not only this group, teaches this false doctrine. But brethren, even some of our own brethren don't believe that these verses refer to heaven. Well, let me tell you this. And let me tell you these people. If they don't want to go to heaven, that's up to them. That's up to them. That's their decision. If they don't want to go to heaven, that's up to them. But I want to go to heaven. I want to go to that place that Christ went to prepare for us. I want to go to that wonderful place, that third heaven. I want to go home. 
I want to go and sit down and talk with Abraham, Moses, David, the Apostle Paul, and many other men of God, and talk for eternity of God's wonderful love and mercy. I want to rest of all the problems, sufferings, and disappointments of this life, to be able to, know, to rest and to know that there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more crying, no more death. Just imagine what beautiful thing is going to be to be in heaven. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 4, verse 9 says, There remained therefore a rest for the people of God. And that rest is in heaven, my brethren. I want to witness the heavenly city having for my life the glory of God and of the Lamb. To walk through the streets of gold, to see myself in the crystal clear water of the sea like crystal. And like brother said a while ago, the, the apostle John is just using words that we can understand. But heaven is more beautiful than we can imagine. The, the Lord uses these words to describe the beauties of heaven so that we want to go there as he describes the horrors of hell so that we can avoid that terrible place. But heaven, brethren, is a beautiful, beautiful place. Revelations 22, 1 through 5 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the tree, street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they, they, they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God give them died light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So, my friends and brethren, you cannot afford to lose heaven. For if you lose heaven, you have lost everything. No matter how much you have done in this life, you are a failure. If you lose heaven, it doesn't matter if you are very rich and famous in this life. It doesn't matter if when you die, many friends go to your funeral. But if you lose heaven, you are the most miserable person and you've been a real failure in this life. On the contrary, it doesn't matter that you are very poor and that you have no fame or riches in this life and that you may even die in a nursing home, and that no one mourns you when you are buried. But are you prepared for that heavenly home? You have been a glorious success. But no one must lose heaven, that holy city. If he loses it, it is his own fault. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through whom, through him alone, John 14 and 16. And he says, Come unto me, all ye that ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. And of course, our brother will let us know how we can go to that place. Thank you. We really appreciate you watching this channel and supporting the Chapel Grove Church of Christ YouTube page. I want to ask you a quick question. Do you want to help in a big way spread the gospel and help this channel succeed? All you have to do is click the subscribe button, click a thumbs up, and then share it with a friend. Share it on social media, share it on text. However you do it, just share it for other people to see. It helps the channel grow, it helps the videos get out there, and it helps spread the gospel in a really easy way that has a big effect. Thank you for supporting us and come back for more videos.